Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the October 26th Select Board meeting. Um, I'll call the meeting to order, and I'd like to begin by reading our public participation policy, as we always do. The Hatfield Select Board welcomes everyone to its meetings <clears throat> and all other public meetings of the Town of Hatfield. All regular and special meetings of the boards and committees of the Town of Hatfield shall be open to the public and shall conform to the open meeting law. Executive sessions are closed to the public and will be held only as prescribed by the statutes of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It is important to recognize that the open meeting law affords the opportunity to listen to the proceedings but not necessarily participate. During meetings of the select board, an attempt will be made to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting the required business of the Hatfield Select Board. Uh, before we get to announcements, is anyone present for public forum? No, you guys are just regular agendas. I am, if you can hear me. Yes, I am. Hi, Tracy. So we're joined uh, by Tracy He. <laughs> Sorry. We're joined by Tracy Hebert, who's joining us online. Go ahead, Tracy. So I just wanted to make two uh, public comments. One is that the spectaculars on Friday for Hatfield at the Hatfield Public Meeting Science Club from 5 to 7. So I'm going to call back. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Been there. Done that. <laughs> <laughs> we will we'll give Tracy a, a minute and, and we'll we'll give her another shot if at that. If it was that. a pet, you could put him outside. <laughs> we can all relate to that, I think. Yes. Um, we also we do we are joined by a couple of other people. I'm not sure, or one other person. It looks like if if they're just joining us, or if they are here for public forum. Anybody? Okay. Um, so we actually have a lot of announcements tonight. Um, I know Ed had something he wanted to um, start off with. Well, as everybody's aware, we had a major gas leak on 5 and 10 projects. And fortunately, nobody got hurt, which was the good news. It could have been a major disaster. But I'd like to personally, I mean, on behalf of the town of Hatfield, thank the response we had from our fire chief, our police chief, and our DPW and I believe we also had assistance from Waitley. Mm -hmm. I just want to express the thanks for the professionalism and how well they responded to the events, which could have been major problems, but they handled it in such a way and such professionalism. I was just very proud of, of the people that supported our town. So I just want to get that out there. And I think I speak on behalf of the board on this. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. yes, thank you. Chief Dukoshek is joining us here tonight. Um, and I would just piggyback on that and say that the communication, um, you know, with, with the police chief and the fire chief and, and me, and I'm assuming the other members of the board as well, was was really reassuring, you know, because it, it was, we were, you know, you're so far away, you don't know what's going on. And it was, it was really nice to be um, kept up to date of, of what was happening out there. So, um, and huge recognition to the members of all your departments. Mm -hmm because I know that they had a long, long night. Um, so we, we do appreciate that. And, and I, we're gonna have uh, something further on this at some point, a, a more official discussion mm -hmm. on what Excuse happened me. out there at some point, but we're not just yet, so. Could I hop on that for one mm -hmm. second? So um, I, I think it's important for the townspeople also on the same topic um, to, to know that um, Marlene, who ultimately shared it with the rest of us, but Marlene had received from Berkshire Gas, um, a, a gentleman who's been there for a number of years, 30 years yeah. actually, who, yeah. who, oh, who, yeah, working yeah, who yeah. said, mm -hmm. I have never been in a situation where the local departments, police, fire, DPW, have been so professional and easy to do business with. So um, I, I'll echo what Ed and Diane already said, but it, mm -hmm. it's also nice to hear it from other organizations, other groups, other businesses that they recognize the efforts that we put that you put forward as well. So thank you. Not surprised to hear that at all, but very grateful yep. to hear that. Yep. So okay. Ed, did you have anything else? No. Um, I'm good. That's it. Uh, well I wanted to thank our veterans uh, affair coordinator Jerry Clark 
and a number of the veterans and the Legion for uh, trying to, well, fixing the flags and trying to get them unstuck from the various locations of telephone poles. Uh, they put in a lot of work and effort. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the wind came by today and uh, we'll probably be seeing them again later this week or the beginning of next week. Uh, but it, it is nice that they are out there mm. um, straightening out the flags, um, you know, to, to honor our veterans and, and, and our patriots and, and making sure the flags are, are flying properly. Uh, it's tough, though. I, I'm not sure how many there are total, but um, there's a number of them, as, as we all know, as you come into Elm, mm -hmm. Maple, Main Street. And uh, it, it's a lot of work to go up and down and try to fix them. But, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's little nails, there's screws, there's all sorts they of things and telephone poles mm -hmm. and wires through the years. So it, it's hard to always have them. Uh, in the perfect shape, but but thank you to those uh, to the veterans and. The oh, and if I may, I just yep. want to remember the history of uh, Lenny Van Flatter and Buster mm -hmm. Samansky for right. all their efforts prior years doing the flag. So I think I don't want to for people to forget that. Right. And I I want to thank Phil and the town for helping out with the flags <coughs> for the town. And also on that point, on November 9th at the COA at 9:30. There's going to be a little uh, coffee for veterans, and if if any veteran in town <coughs> would like to attend, me. then you please call the COA. And I I think the number is what two four seven nine zero zero three two four seven nine zero zero three. There's going to be a representative from the VA, uh, Lindsay Saradoga is going to be so, going to be there, and Jerry Clark, our veterans agent, will be there to answer any questions. So I thank you for sticking that in on the flags because I just remember that, okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Anything else, Brian? Um, well, we had the uh, dedication. Did you want me to, you, can, you want me? Oh, so uh, for those folks, uh, it was great to see many of you a um, couple weeks ago, the Smith Academy field hockey field was dedicated to Judy Strong, um, who's, who's reputation is, is is just great as a as a Hatfield resident um, but the field hockey field was dedicated to Judy there was a game um, that took place um, alumni game which was a lot of fun um, Diana uh, hosted the uh, the event as far as uh, emceeing uh, it was great to see so many people the weather was great um, Judy was very appreciative as was her family and it's a very well-deserved honor um, that the Judy Strong Field Hockey Field is mm -hmm. now at Smith Academy. And all the speakers did a wonderful job. I know Diane did a nice yep. job with, with her presentation along with, I think it was a couple others that spoke and it was very nice, yes. It was a really nice day. Yeah. So much fun, huge turnout, which was great. There were a lot of people there that really, you know, have nothing to do with necessarily field hockey, right. but we're just coming as community members. And I think everybody's just so you know, proud of Judy and grateful for the things she's now giving back. Um, and the alumni game, which we're hoping is really going to be an annual event now, was so fun. So many alumni came back, even some, believe it or not, for my age group. Um, and it was just fun. And actually, they played very well. They still they still had it. So it was a tournament game tomorrow, right? The the, yeah, I was. And yep. Boys, and I will mention the, the boys soccer's in Hadley. And I think the girls where are the girls at? Um, so the, I did want to mention Smith Academy <coughs> Sports because all three fall sports teams made it to tournament, which is exciting. So um, men's soccer won their first game, and they play Hopkins next. Tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Wednesday. It is? That's what I thought. Well, I'm sure the information is either on the school website Plus or uh, there's weather. various Facebook pages that will have it. Um, so people can get that information, or I'm sure they could call the school and, and get that information. Um, w let's see, that was boys soccer. Women's soccer um, also made it to tournament. They did not win their first tournament game, but they had, do have a second game later this week. Again, I don't know the details on that one. And then uh, field hockey made the tournament, and they have their first tournament game um, tomorrow. It was supposed to be tonight, but the weather, due to the weather, they postponed it. So that's going to be played at Deerfield Academy. It's actually going to be live streamed. Mm -hmm. So there's a link cool. that will be available. <coughs> um, I'm going to try to have, um, I don't have the ability to put it onto some of the Facebook pages, but 
um, I'm going to try to make sure that we, we have that done. And, and for the other teams, too, because they may, I haven't heard about the other ones being live streamed, but I believe that they may be live streamed. Um, so congratulations to those teams. And um, it's, it's been a fun season, I can tell you that much. I just want to mention one more thing, and that is to thank the Council on Aging for organizing the flu clinic mm -hmm. um, for seniors and for town employees. That's taking place tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, and that's just a nice, nice service they do every year. So this is for announcements, right, Marlene? Yes, it is. So um, I'm going to hold this up. There is um, for sale a 350th anniversary commemorative photo book. Um, I've seen bits and pieces of it, and it's going to be really beautiful. Um, if it's ordered by November 1st, there's a discounted price of $25. It's going to be over 60 pages long, 400 photos. That is 50% off. So after November 1st, it will go up to um, $50. Um, and um, let's see, it says it'll be available for pickup by December 15th, which means it would make a nice holiday gift. So there are these forms. They're probably available at Town Hall, right, Marlene? Yes, they are. And I bet if I, they're probably on the 350th website. They're there as well. As well. So um, there's a, a variety of ways you can get information about that if you're interested in, in having one. Um, I got two more things I forgot. <laughs> And I have one, unless okay. I unless Halloween, that's hitting. Halloween is Saturday. Drive Sunday. safe out there with the kids. So it remember that. And also, yes. November eleventh, since this is already the end of October. Never November eleventh <coughs> in front of town hall will be a small ceremony. Uh, the war to end all wars. Eleven, eleven, eleven. So November eleventh, eleven a.m. in front of town hall. There'll be like a five or ten minute ceremony if anybody can attend. So always a nice ceremony. You, it was that was the two things, Halloween and the okay. That's, that's, that's it. Okay. <laughs> there is a there are a lot tonight. Um, I lastly for me, uh, I did want folks to know in case they miss it in the paper that um, Hatfield Fire Chief um, Bob Flaherty was named a finalist in the Reader's Choice Awards um, for best individual first responder. And um, sadly, I guess, or, or thankfully, uh, I've, I've been around Bob on a, a couple of occasions when, when I've gotten to see him in action. And um, there is no doubt as to why he is, he is one of the finalists. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I just thought people should know that uh, that's the reputation that the chief has uh, in leading our EMS department. And, um, and it was a reader's choice, and it was a poll, and Bob was one of the finalists. So congratulations to uh, Chief Flaherty on that. Excellent. Congrats, Chief. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe we could get back to Tracy Hebert <laughs> before we get into our agenda. Hi, Tracy. Hi, guys. Sorry about that. Um, if you are looking for something for your children to do, get them out of the house. We're having the spectacular um, held on Friday from 5 to 7 at the Hatfield Lions Pavilion, which is behind the elementary school. Tickets are on sale on HatfieldPTA.com. Uh, we are closing sales. Last day to purchase them is tomorrow, so you can get a head count for food. Um, and the other thing is that the PTA has organized a candy drive for the last couple of weeks. And we're asking for grace. It's our first year kind of experiencing that. Um, we would love to have the residents of Primrose Path, Pleasant View Drive, or I'm told it was previously called the Acres, um, go to our website so that we can count them in our count to distribute candy donations to them. Again, HatfieldPTA.com, and they can click on Primrose in the navigation bar, so we can just get a count and distribute the bags that are on my table that my husband would love to see gone. <laughs> so that is all that I'm asking. Um, thank you for letting me speak. Oh, thanks for the info, Tracy, and thanks for doing those things. I'm sure, I'm sure the people in the acres appreciate it. I, I think we're all aware of what Thanksgiving night is like at their houses. It's got to be, got to be yeah. great, but it takes a lot of candy to get through it. So, okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy.
And did anyone else happen to need public forum before we move into the agenda items? Okay. Uh, okay. Approval of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the executive session minutes from October 21st, 2021, and the regular meeting minutes of October 21st, 2021. Second. A motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? No, ma'am. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. If I may, mm -hmm. would you mind if we took up topic number five? Yeah. Did you mean, could you repeat that again? The minutes that we were October 21st. Oh, October 21st. Okay. That's what I read. I don't know if that's what came out of my Yeah, mind. October 21st. Okay. I thought you said <laughs> September 21st. Aye. Could have, but I meant October. Okay, so both both, both sets both of meetings. Both executive and regular session. Okay, and then there's September 28th meeting minutes. Uh, yes, there are under here. Thank Make you. Motion approved. Meeting minutes September 28th, 2021. Second. A motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. I, I'm okay. sorry. I, I was going to ask if the board minded if we took up topic number five while Chief DeKoshak is here. Yes, I was going to ask you to take um, that out regarding of Regarding the traffic control officer policy. Right. Sure. Let's do it. Hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi. Well, thanks for seeing me. I think you maybe want to... Do you want him to come up to the microphone, John? No. No? Okay. Yeah. Did I talk loud enough or no? It sounds better or closer. Oh, I see. That's good. Testing one two three. Hi. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for seeing me. You're welcome. So this is a new policy that I want to implement. I'd like your approval on it. It's called the traffic control officer. I didn't make. I didn't uh, invent this. This wheel is around now. Um, many departments across the state are doing it for multiple for multiple reasons. The main reason it's hard to find officers now or anybody to stand on the road and, and, and wave at uh, traffic. Um, we're seeing that all across the state, um, trying to fill details. There's unfilled details everywhere, believe it or not. Um, there's also the, you know, the police reform, and we have a lot of officers that might not make it through the, the police reform type of thing, not for any disciplinary or anything, you know, for whatever reasons, they don't have the time um, to devote to the Bridge Academy or something of that nature uh, because of their regular jobs. So this would allow them to still be able to be out there and, and direct traffic. You know, they're trained in how to do it and, and they're equipped on how to do it. The other thing, um, any retired police officers, this would allow retired police officers in town, um, which I've already had some approach me um, with interest in doing the same thing. So it's going to fill our ranks in that sense uh, to get to get more detail officers. They would be non-sworn personnel, so they're not police officers out there directing traffic, they're traffic control officers. Their uniforms are, um, would be very similar, um, but they wouldn't have a badge, they wouldn't carry a gun, and they have no arrest powers. They're simply there to, to do traffic. And we can use them for outside details, we can use them for parades or any type of crowd control that, that we see fit at that point in time. They are responsible for buying their uniforms, maintaining their uniforms. Um, their uniforms would have just a Hatfield Police insignia on the front and, ha and traffic control officer on the back of their shirt or their jacket or whatever it is they're wearing. Um, so uh, when it comes to um, compensation, obviously it's the detail rate that we, we pay anybody um, for that matter. So fire department can do them too, full-time firemen are eligible. Um, that's written into the policy. This policy just mirrors Greenfield's policy. Um, that's where I got it. We're famous for stealing each other's policies. Um, when it comes to uh, any insurance or anything like that, they're not, they're at, you know, they're at will per diem employees, so there's no town benefits that apply. Uh, to them at so it would be almost like a substitute teacher sort of yes, thing. Yes. Um, yeah. The only thing that would apply would be workers' compensation, obviously, if they were hurt, no fault of their own or something of that nature. That's a dangerous job. It can be, mm -hmm. yeah, if you're not paying attention. Hopefully they're paying attention. Or if that's other people using, aren't paying attention. That's why we're using <laughs> former police It's more officers. if other people aren't paying attention, yeah. yeah. But that's why we're using former police officers, firemen, people that are used to being out in the road. Um, if for some reason... <coughs> 
an officer was decertified by the newly appointed post commission, then they wouldn't be eligible. This would only be for police officers, former police officers in good standing um, to do this, firemen in good standing type of a thing. Um, okay, they, so they'd have to have so, that kind of training to be able to do this, or, I mean, you couldn't have... Just a regular citizen, like no. Like, Ed couldn't want to do it. No, this is just okay. for people with, with that experience, with the experience of it. So, again, okay. it, it really, it retired police officers, full-time firemen, um, obviously... Sheriffs? I, I know there's some sheriff's sheriff department are folks in there, that do it. Exactly, anything of that nature. Um, obviously, it goes to our ranks first, yeah. um, our working ranks, and then after that, <coughs> um, it would go to our traffic control. And they're out there with communication capabilities? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. It's about manpower, basically. Right. It's, essentially, it is about manpower. Yeah. And not tapping your officers right. to right. the mm -hmm. bitter end, you know, especially we're running a big project right now, right. Yep. requiring a lot of that. And the... Um, the only other thing was Sharon would have, you know, I would have a separate payroll that would be just for the traffic control officers. So they would be on town payroll, obviously, or mm -hmm. in the in the system at that point in time. But it would be a completely separate payroll for them. And just to clarify for townspeople, that's paid by whoever the needs the detail, yep. right? So that's not a town expense it's just covered by no so we have the construction company or right whatever. we have a revolving account mm -hmm. that is uh, you know that i pay out of for any detail even our our full-time officers i it gets paid out of that revolving account i build the contractor the contractor then then um you know pays the department and then that goes back into that account so that account mm -hmm. fluctuates greatly right. up and down so actually i think this is a great idea when you have a small department and you have a lot of work like on five and ten and very demanding work and you only have you don't want to burn anybody out and overwork anybody i think this would help supplement the department I, mm -hmm. it sounds like a great idea to me well and having a like you know what happened last <coughs> week having a pool of people like this available and when you may need to call right. more people yep. in for for things would be great so yep. um yeah i just had jotted down notes about their communication capabilities and their training but you address that to to my satisfaction, so I think it sounds great. It does. What do we need to do? Do we need to uh, vote? Just approve it. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Hatfield Police Department traffic control officer. I'll second that. A motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? No, thanks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank thanks, you, Chief. Chief. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. I just want to say Chief Flaherty has joined us oh. on here. And unfortunately, Bob, you missed all the nice things we said about you. So make sure you watch, rewatch this meeting. <laughs> um, so we are, we're going to continue to go out of order. Actually, we did not have, Claudia? right, yeah, well, we, we have, we are joined by Claudia Sardi, who is our COVID coordinator. Um, she's joining us online and, um, to give us an update, a, a COVID update. Claudia? Hi, everyone. Hi, Claudia. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. OK, I just wanted to um, update everyone that since um, actually last week was, was very, very busy uh, for COVID activity, um, through Monday, October 18th to October 24th, we saw seven cases come through, um, which was definitely up from the weeks before. Uh, as, as far as I can tell in my interviews, there doesn't seem to be any one common denominator among any of these cases. Uh, there are um, two households involved, but those are just people, you know, cohabitating, um, who got it first, you know, that, that's anybody's question, but they, but they would both have it. Um, but I can't seem to see any particular reason for that unusual spike in cases. So there were, how many actual households had cases? Uh, out of those households, um, okay, there were two households that had cases. Um, so the, the number of households would be, oh, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. Five, okay. Yeah. So there was so there was one household with more than one case, and then exactly yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that that's sort of an important piece of this to know. You know, when you hear seven, 
It sounds mm -hmm. like a lot, but if if there are some in the same household, that makes some sense. Mm -hmm. and, um, correct, yes, that can get a little bit confusing. Sometimes. And I see in your notes here, it also said that none had attended any large scale events in the two weeks prior. Yeah. So that's encouraging that um, yes. we might yes. not, that might mean we wouldn't expect to see, you know, spike. numbers spiking mm -hmm. moving forward. So, okay. Well, I appreciate the update. Do either of you have any questions? How many um, are still in quarantine, Claudia? Uh, um, those, um, I think that there are only two that are still in quarantine. Okay. Good. Hmm. Okay. I, I, would have to go back, I would have to go back to uh, the electronic system and give that a double check, but I think okay. it's only a couple of people. I, I just was, you know, curious to know where in where in the COVID experience they were. That's all. Um, so, well, hopefully we'll see, um, you know, a reduction in numbers next week. We, and, that, would be, that would be very nice. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, we did have one come in today, but otherwise, uh, let me cross my fingers and say things have been quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that doesn't change anything. Excellent. Well, I, I, I can, I'm speaking for myself, but I, I know there's others that are appreciative of the community calls on Mondays, so. Yes. Okay, Claudia, did you have anything, Brian? No, no, no. Anybody I didn't else? know Claudia had any questions Anybody? of us or need anything uh, no, or. No. Okay. okay, great, Claudia. Thank you very much. Thanks, Claudia. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Okay, so we can get into posted business now. Yes. Okay, perfect. Topic we have a one. A minute to take up the appointments and resignations. One minute. The water and sewer hearing is at six o'clock. Right. Oh well, we could maybe get through one or two of them. Okay. Um, so we have a, um, this is to, this is a resignation mm -hmm. from the police department. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why does this look like selectman's appointment? Okay. Oh, this uh, appointment form would get completed when the individual, when someone replaces that. So we need a vote to accept, accept the, the uh, resignation. resignation. Right. I'll right. make a motion to accept the resignation of Sean Eckler from the police department. I'll second that. What do we grab? Yes. A motion's made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There is a resignation from Charlie Guimon from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Make a motion to accept the resignation of Charlie Guimon from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Order to grab. Second. A motion made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Charlie. The uh, there's a motion of resignation of Kathleen Zemer from the local cultural council. I'll make a motion to accept that. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. And then we have, we can do the appointment to the um, local cultural council. I'll make a motion to ex appoint Kathy Winters to the local cultural council, council and thank her for Stepping up for that appointment. Absolutely. Second. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then um, I don't have paperwork on this other appointment of Danielle Staniszewski as the Rec Committee representative to see Community Preservation Commission. Do I? Um, well, she's the, if, if I may, I, I, so I, I think what we have is the, She's on the rec committee, but to be right. appointed to She's, the community right. preservation. Right. So committee. it is that may right? be in the signature it's, folder. Oh, okay. Know, is there a form in the signature oh, folder? Oh, I didn't have that in mine. Yeah. Maybe in your okay. packet. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll, okay. We'll get to folder. this. We, we need okay. to open that hearing. But so it, was there a motion? Um, there's a motion to appoint Danielle as the rec committee representative to the um, conservation community preservation. Community preservation. Community preservation. Community preservation. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We we plowed right through those. Oh, I do have it. Here it is right here. Okay. So next we have, we do have a 6 p.m. hearing um, on the um, water and sewer rate increases. Uh, you, you gen Phil and... and um, Dave. 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 Yeah, Dave. sorry. I'm, I drew a blank, Dave. <laughs> Before we get started, do you all have a copy of that two-page handout, they Marlene, in the, in the packet? Okay. Do. Yes. Yes, I have we extras do. here if you want me to make them available to the to the public. I don't know. Is there an extra one? Yes, sir. 
why don't we start by um, just introducing Dave Prickett, uh, mm -hmm. whose uh, engineering firm is, is uh, assists Hatfield with our water and sewer projects through the years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we asked him to be present to answer any questions that the board may have mm -hmm. or the public may have as far as the proposal um, for the rate increases. Yes. So, how's that? That's great. How about if we go through our sort of our presentation on it first? What? Can we go through our presentation on it first and then see? Perhaps your question will be answered in sort of what we're going to discuss here. Okay. Um, so uh, there is a, a um, sewer rate increase and a water rate increase proposed. Um, there's, um, there's several reasons listed here, which I'm happy to go into. Um, I want to point out to people that the current rate, the current sewer rate is, is um, $889 um, per, what is HCF? 100 cubic, 100, 100 cubic feet, sorry. And the, we are proposing an increase of 5%, um, which would bring the proposed rate for FY22 to 934. The approximate average additional cost per month um, per residential user is $2.40. Um, so quite reasonable. On the water side, um, the current rate per 100 cubic feet is $4.67. Again, a 5% increase is proposed, which would bring the new rate to $4.91. And the average um, user would see a, a um, cost per month increase of about $1.85. Um, I think that the main point that I would like to make is that we're, we're sewer rates and water rates were, were not raised for a long time and we're trying to sort of catch up and we're trying to do that as fairly and incrementally as we can um, for, for rate payers. Uh, but maybe you wanted to speak to the other reasons because the other, the, the information about the USDA and all of that is really compelling and, and, and townspeople I think need to understand that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you did a very good job with the intro, Diana. Just for the record, Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Um, we've had the pleasure of, of working with the town of Hatfield for quite a few years, and each year um, your team with DPC has kind of tried to dust things off and update things financially as to what they look like each year. Um, you may recognize, for those of you, that we did this last year, very similar format. Um, last year you made that first step. That was a big one, um, and you got through that. Um, since that time, uh, the town's worked hard um, uh, to put together, Marlene and, and Phil and Eric and the rest of the staff, to put together a funding application to USDA. So the goal now is to, uh, for the proposed upgrade at the plant, try to get as big a grant and as low an interest rate as we possibly can for those upgrades that, as you said, Diana, have been deferred. Um, and Hatfield uh, financial takeaways are always subjective, personally. But generally speaking, your water and sewer rates are about 60% of the statewide average. So that's a combination of, one, that you have had growth, unlike a lot of communities over the last 20 years, routes 5 and 10, et cetera. So you have had a healthy base. Um, and you've also have some deferred capital needs. So at some point, those paths merge, and, and here we are. Um, this year, what's proposed, to your point of the 5% increase on both sewer and water, um, is really driven just by the increase in um, recurring capital, uh, utilities, sludge costs. Current inflation, as we've all heard when we watch the news this year, is going to probably be at least 4 or 5% nationally. Wastewater inflation in a normal year, when regular inflation is 2 or 3%, wastewater O&M inflation is usually between 5 and 7%. So I tell all my clients, and it's the same thing up the road in Deerfield and the other communities we work with, a 5% increase annually is kind of like a no action. It's just the cost of doing business. I know you live it on every possible angle in, in municipal government, um, but there are a lot of things in the wastewater that we can't control. Um, so that's why we propose what we have. Um, consistent with past years, we try to boil this down to what this means for people. And when you do it on a monthly basis, 5%, 5% of what, you know, and it comes out to a couple of bucks a month for a sewer customer and a couple bucks more per month for a water customer. And people can usually relate to that in terms of the other bills and utilities that they pay. And 
I will say, again, it's all perception from where you're sitting, but Hatfield has very favorable. You've you managed things very frugally and consciously over the years, and, and that's great. And now, as you said, Diane, it's uh, we're facing a series of steps, and I would consider this one, in my opinion, to be pretty modest. Um, there will be another one at some point once the rubber meets the road with the plan upgrade. We don't want to quantify that yet because we just don't know. We're fingers crossed for maximum grant contribution from USDA. So you've done and, everything. And we have to be at certain rates, right, to qualify yeah, for we USDA grants. We needed to make sure grants. last year um, that we got the rates up above 1% of median household income. That's a underwriting criteria that USDA uses in terms of assessing how much grant Hatfield might be eligible for. So. The maximum grant eligibility is 45%, and you can do the math on a multi-million dollar project. That would be, you know, a whale of a savings. And also the interest rate, which right now is fluctuating anywhere from one and three eighths to one and seven eighths for a 40 year note. That's pretty amazing. So, uh, so they offer both the grants yeah. to offset the cost and then the loans to low interest loans yeah. help you borrow at a yeah. really efficient rate. Yeah. <coughs> it's below Excuse market me. rate. So. Right. I just want to say one thing. I, I was contacted by a resident um, and who was upset about the, the proposal and said, you know, that they had heard the rates were going up 25 percent and that it was to cover the cost of the project out on five and ten. And so I just want to I, I mean, it's really important that that, you know, you're what you're explaining, Dave, to, to residents that that's not what this is for. That's a, that's the whole different funding source. It's, it, you know, it was grants and, and borrowing. Um, but, you know, just just to clarify, because there may be other residents who think the same thing, and that, that's not what's Snowball happening. Snowball tends to accumulate it uh, does. from one mouth to the other. It does. <laughs> um, so I, I think this is all really valuable um, information. And, you know, um, you know one, of the, one of the bullet points here under why the sewer rate is increasing is um, that the wastewater management plan identified nearly $32 million in capital needs for the collection system, pump stations, and wastewater treatment plant, 12 million of which is proposed over the next three years. So there's significant um, investment that's going to be required, right. um, you know, to keep to keep our system current and, and um, you know, probably in compliance. So um, that's that's that's, that's part of the spirit yep. of what's behind this. Correct. I I think on top of that, the the paragraph above it that. Larry, people in the audience can see, but basically it says the Hatfield wastewater treatment plant is nearly 40 years old, mm -hmm. and the typical life expect expectancy of the equip mechanical equipment is 20 years. So portions of the collection system are nearly 100 years old. So th this is what began this whole process. I mean, it's, it, it goes on year after year, but last year was the year where we said, okay, we really need to to take a look at this, we, we need to get our ducks in a row. We need to be able to qualify for any financial assistance, grants, low interest loans, yep. and, and and that's what we are that's what we are trying to do, um, and that's what we are doing. Um, and the same is true on the water side. Yeah, absolutely. It's, right with with the aging. Every time a pipe system, breaks, it's the, because it's a hundred years um, old, right? <laughs> so I mean, yeah, it's just you know, it's, um, it's the nature of the beast, and it's right? All, it's um, all communities yeah. around here have yeah, the yeah. same yeah you're a little younger on the water side with your treatment plant mm -hmm. yep. you're, you've got some old pipes no doubt yeah. about it mm -hmm. right. um, mm -hmm. and that's typical of your neighboring communities it's uh you're, you're not on an island of your own there it's and you know the the actual health of this the um, wastewater treatment plant considering its age is a credit to mm -hmm. our um, really outstanding sewer department employees past and present um, you know who've done a really good job of, of caring for it so um, Ed, did you have anything? I just want to. I just want to clarify. This is online, right? Yes, it is. So, again, the current rate per hundred cubic feet is eight dollars and eighty-nine cents. So the proposed increase is five percent, and the proposed increase is nine dollars and thirty-four cents. So that's actually two dollars and forty cents per month. Less than a Big Mac meal. Anyways, I just want to <laughs> make that. And, and then I also want to point out that's on the sewer side and on the water side. The current rate's $4.67. The proposed increase is another 5%. And the proposed rate is $4.91. So 
that's an, uh, that's one dollar eighty five cents per month. So I just want to make sure that people understand because I've heard the same thing that they're increasing the rates twenty five fifty percent. No, we're increasing. We're proposing two dollars and forty cents on a sewer side per month, and one dollar eighty five cents. And again, it's t the, all this information is here is because we did not do anything. The whole town's been paying for the sewer and not just the sewer users, and the whole town's been paying for the water and not just the water users. So uh, that, and everybody says that hasn't been that fair over the years, making the whole town pay for right. it. So I mean, and this again ties us into getting USDA grants. So if, if we want to qualify for a USDA grant, we need to show them that we can pay for these, these things. And that's the reason for it. And the grants for USDA are like 1.7 or whatever you said, they were very up, low. Up to 45% right. the interest rates are below market, certainly. So Significant. The only, the only yeah. question I have, under this COVID recovery money, there's been some discussion that wastewater projects may, in fact, somewhat qualify. At a, not, not the whole thing, millions of dollars, but is, is that true that we may have some projects that may qualify to offset sure. this or mm -hmm. qualify to respond to that. Okay. Yeah, there there are some infrastructure projects right. they have been put on a list and distributed. Right. You I know, just which the, it, the people in town to know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're but, also looking at that too. So yeah. that's all. Right. But in the water and sewer world <laughs> Nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars is a, a lot of money. It's a big chunk of money. For it's those a big chunk of money, but it's yes. not really a lot when you start working right. those things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and we need to balance, yeah. you know, those projects with with other yeah. things that also need some yeah. attention and that are appropriate for the COVID yeah. funds. So, if I could just add, um, Dave, I understand the next USDA grant application uh, round is in January, I believe. It's supposed yeah, to be this so you, winter. USDA's fiscal year starts December 1st. Mm -hmm. So I would expect, and our application's complete and submitted. So right. I would expect that we would we will hear something in first quarter. Yeah. And then, as I said before, then mm. kind of once we have a soft commitment, mm -hmm. You know, we will have to, we, the royal we, the residents of Hadfield, mm -hmm. will have to decide whether they want to authorize the funds because authorization of mm -hmm. the monetary commitment is a prerequisite to getting mm -hmm. a right. hard and fast letter. So we've got a couple of months to kind of kick the tires and see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Hope construction inflation kind of comes back down to earth a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, but I suspect first quarter we'll be back talking about this in public forum. And then timing-wise, are you able to make those um, those allocations at town meeting? Yeah, which is in May. Presumably, um, if the stars align, either at annual town meeting in the spring or a special town meeting. Okay, so it wouldn't need to, to be it. a special it would before need to be annual. Very quick. Okay. They give us a three-year shot clock once they give us the letter. Oh, it okay. used to be five years, and it was like five years piece of cake, but. For them, the money started getting old and inflation started hitting it. So now they say three years, which as Phil can attest, three years is not a lot to get a multi-million dollar public project done. You're living it right now. You, mm -hmm. you know what it takes. So mm -hmm. we'll have to hustle. But, you know, hopefully the carrot is uh, is significant and, you know, is enticing and gives us something to work towards. Great. So. Well, you're, you know, the, the work of your firm is very much appreciated. Yep. Your staff does yeah. most of the work. We're just here and to support. And we, we thank them as well. And Marlene, I know you help out. Larry, you had mentioned you had a question. Was it answered in some of the things that were discussed tonight? No. Okay. Um, I'd like to say a few things. Uh, first of all, if you want to take some. I don't know if they can hear the public. Sure. First of all, I think this is a great uh, initiative that you started. It's, there's these guys, I, I, I don't know if that's the same firm that did the adjustment a few years ago when Brian was in charge. And I think unfortunately then it wasn't really sold to the town very well. And that's why you had so much pushback. And I think the rates were much more than this, or at least they seem like it to most of the residents. So that was not done well. And yes, there is tremendous deferred maintenance in this town. And so it is time to address it. So I, I think that's a good move that you've done and brought these fellows in. But um, you know, maybe there's more rate takers, as he mentioned, uh, and maybe some of those projects will 
contribute to some of this infrastructure improvement. Uh, oh. It almost should be mandated in some of those 510 projects. Um, the, the thing that I actually came for is the more detailed rate chart, which isn't reflected in this, but, and I don't know if they make recommendations for the, there's rates beyond the uh, 100 cubic foot rate. And uh, probably for the last five, six, or even longer, maybe eight years, uh, I've been penalized, and other farmers in town have been penalized with the agriculture meter. And I brought this up to Phil every year. And uh, I don't, the point is that some years ago, uh, Tony advised me, I have horses, I have livestock, that I could separate my water line and, uh, for the livestock. And it would be, wouldn't have a sewer component on it, because I do live in an area that's serviced by sewer. And uh, the rate would be just the water rate, and it would be the usage, actual usage. I had a plumber come in and rearrange some exterior taps, the hydrant for the horses. I bought a meter, and I believe I was even charged for the uh, radio, radio reading device. And my water bill was quite affordable. Some time ago, I think it was a bit of a desperate situation by the town. They changed the rate schedule for agriculture meters and established a minimum rate of $54. So now I get a water bill for the horses for $54 every, whenever you send bills out, every quarter, every couple months. Twice a year. It is. And I'd like to request that when you do adjust the rates that you can go back to an actual uh, reading. They take the reading anyway and charge me what water I use, not a minimum flat rate, which is just unjust. It's it's like having taxation without representation, that I'm charged a minimum. And once uh, Tony, I think, sent me to the collector and said, well, there's some charges involved in reading the meter. Well, that should be factored into the water rate or the sewer rate. I don't have to pay a minimum just because other people, I don't know what, I don't know how that, that, that wasn't rational to me. So I came here to ask you, when you look at the whole chart, which goes beyond this uh, 100 cubic meter uh, rate, that maybe you'd revert the agriculture meters to actual. I might be the only person that has a minimum because everyone else is doing a lot more intensive farming than I am or at livestock, and they probably pay their actual rate. What was your bill before there was a minimum? Was Ten, twelve dollars probably. I don't even remember. It was a while ago, but it was very small. I just I only have two horses. But $54 is a lot for, and I, especially because I spent the money for the, probably between $750 and $800 at the time to do the meter, uh, independent water line. Okay. Bill, so can it's not a life-changing request, but I, I wanted to ask if you would look at the rate chart when you adopt the, the new rates. We have a minimum on residential um, bills as well. You know what which I'm talking is, about? Did you have anything to do with the minimums or you know how they do that? Well, the minimum for the house for a household for a resident is $75. So the ag rate, of course, is lower. Mm -hmm. So there is a minimum for yeah, residential. You know, have, you know, during the winter months, you have quite a few that have the minimum rate because they're... This is the second meter for me. They're Florida. The second account. So I actually did have... That, that actually brings up a good question because I did have a resident ask me about the minimum rate and how that might be affected by this. So is it still, would the minimum w rate go up 5% or the minimum rate would stay what it is? There's no proposed change to the base rates, minimum rates, et cetera, just the usage component. It's a, um, if, if I may, just to, to add on to this gentleman's comments, and I, I totally get it. And when we do these evaluations, and this was kind of a, uh, I'll call it a poor man's update from past years, so we didn't really drill down into some of the nuances, but we try to make things as fair and equitable as possible. There's always 5% on each end. And on the community that I live in, you know, there is no second meter thing. And I water my lawn a ton. And I pay for all that on the sewer side. And right. while I may not be happy for it, I just kind of accept it. Um, the, the one thing that I do say and that I see community to community 
on the sewer side and you've already solved that issue at your property, so that was smart. Um, but 90 to 95% of the annual sewer costs are fixed regardless of whether we have a wet year, dry year, you know, it's labor, it's sludge, it's, you know, power, and you just don't see, on the, on the water side, it does vary a little bit, but I'd say it's at least still 80 to 85% of the costs are fixed. So the challenge is trying to find something that's fair and equitable for the 90% in the middle and understand that where you live, somebody may live in the future, and everyone, the pipes that are in the road are providing the service to everyone, and it comes into to all of those. So I, I totally get what you're saying, but I, I, I suspect that you're probably in that, that five to five percent on each end where it's so hard to make it perfect. It would be cheaper if I went back to one meter. Did you end up saving on the sewer side though when you pulled that out? You're not paying. Yeah. Not much, but they didn't. There's not that much water used on you the don't other use side. a lot of water. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No, I. I, I mean, see. it's simple. It's all in place. It was done for a few years. Right. Just, I'm asking to go back to the, to no, pay what we, we use. If you, if you do that, the, the, the formula is pretty simple, and it's the same thing when communities have a senior abatement or, you know, the dollars per gallon go up when the fixed fees come down, if it's strictly usage. The challenge on that side is the less fixed fees you have and the more consumption-based fees you have, the more challenging it is for Marlene and Phil and, you know, Eric and everybody else and Tony to budget because your revenue well, is, is far less My stable. 50 bucks isn't going to balance the budget, but it's... Well, uh, but over the course of uh, utility, like last year as an example in July, I'm guessing water revenues are down. I mean, we had the wettest yeah. July on record, so that's typically... A then you'll, that's right, and that's why yeah. rates are adjusted every year, predicated on the previous history of yeah. your but cycle. Those, but those costs... Are still there? Yeah, are fixed. So, yeah. and I don't mean to be. So, no, I know how this works, so, but uh, I think I may be one of the only people that is stuck with the minimum for agriculture metering. It sounds like Larry, it would be cheaper to go back to one meter. Well, if the town will pay for uh, the plumber to come and reroute uh, the feed, I'll do it. So, I think the decision for for tonight is the the the. At the regular rates that we're setting. Right. Um, and so maybe we need to take a look at, you know, there are some other things broken out, the ag rate and all to, of that. We'd have to drill into it and find out how many customers might be impacted by a right. change. How many are hit by the minimum wage? Maybe. I'm just not prepared maybe to speak none. to the to Yeah, the yeah. Right. And, 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 and it's yeah. outside the scope of this agenda item. Is but, I mean, I appreciate you raising it, and maybe it's something we, we take a look into and... Okay. And bring back, well, you know, because you're right. There, there's more than just the simple rates. Mm -hmm. So we're, we we'd be willing to take a look at that. Okay. And um, is that okay, Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. yeah, you're welcome. you're welcome, Larry. Thanks for coming down. Michael Cahill is uh, joining us online, and it looks like you have a comment, Michael. Mike. Your microphone, Mike. Mike. Your mic is off, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're... There, there you there are. You Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing me. Real quick, because uh, I have another meeting to go to. Uh, I'm here, as I was last year, uh, a little confused over the calculation of the annual residential sewer cost. And, um, the analysis that Ray Prickett has shown us is, uh, it looks like he's coming in with a number that's uh, set in a neighborhood, $570 or something like that for the annual uh, residential sewer cost. And, and I guess I'm confused. Uh, if you take your, our sewer enterprise budget, which is about $400,000, and if you add to that our sewer enterprise principal interest, which is another $200,000, that's six hundred thousand dollars. So if you divide that by the number of sewer users, which is seven hundred and fifty users approximately, that could be almost eight hundred dollars. Which is, is to me is confusing. I don't know where where they are coming up with that number you're coming up with. Um, but if you add those sewer costs all together and divide it by the number of who are using it. It's a lot higher 
than the number you're coming up with, and far exceeds the 1% minimum of the minimum household uh, income uh, hurdle rate. So uh, th that's one question. And, and you know, I would hope that maybe offline at some point you could show your calculation because I, I really don't understand where you're coming up with your number. And the issue there is the number that's driving, at least last year, all the 25% increase. Um, and and is somewhat behind, you know, the, this year's five percent. Um, I think that we're applying for USDA loans for for the infrastructure that's coming down the pipe. Um, I, I really appreciate that. The concern that I have is that we may be raising rates meet a hurdle when the rates, the, the calculation for raising those rates is not correct, um, that we may very well, as a community, already be, be exceeding that hurdle rate. No. Um, if, if my calculation is right, um, which brings me then to the, the next issue, and that is, you know, you guys are talking about, and I appreciate this, you know, $2.50 a month on, on the average bill, when you add it across 12 months, and you add broader to it, it's about a $50 increase to the average user. Well, last year, the increase was $200 or maybe even more to the average user. So if you add the two of them together, you're looking at $250. Then if you add our 5% tax increase to that $250, you're probably coming up with something in the neighborhood of five to $600. Where is he getting these numbers? Tax no increase to the, to the average sewer user. And so I feel for the, the elderly in the community, the people who own homes with fixed incomes and who have over the last two years seen now a increase, if you will, some property taxes, some water sewer, but um, recurring somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 bucks a year. That's a lot of money. So, I just wanted to put this whole thing in a much larger perspective um, for the board because I understand that fifty dollars a year, well, that's not, but when you add last year's increase to it, or when you add the undergoing property tax increase to it, and some of our sewer and water expenses are being paid out of taxation, you guys know that. That it's a pretty significant increase to people who are on fixed income. So, you know, uh, offline, Dave, if you can come up with uh, uh, a method of showing a calculation where you're coming up with $570 uh, of, of residential sewer cost, I'd appreciate seeing that. Because by my calculation, it's almost $800, and which makes it far exceed that hurdle level of 1%. And next year, it would have far exceeded it. So. <laughs> okay, Mike, we'll, we'll, we'll give Dave a chance to address that. Okay. I can, um, uh, oh, sorry to interrupt you. You're good, Dave, go okay. ahead. Okay, so I can respond to the first couple things and then it got kind of high level political things and I'll let <laughs> the elected officials deal with the, the broader things beyond the sewer and water enterprise funds. Um, but on the, on the water wastewater sides, this is based on the median water and sewer consumption for a residential customer. Um, you have a great number of water and sewer customers that are not equal. In other words, they're multi-EDU properties, et cetera. So that's why the data isn't linear in terms of budget, number of customers, $800. It's, it's budget, number of customers, number of customers if it's x equals 1.3x in edu so that's why the math isn't linear there you have a lot of customers that are bigger than one house um, but the the projections for median single family home water sewer it's kind of the best we can do we try to look in the middle and say if you're in the middle in terms of water consumption this is where you'll be and we've always been honest that 
if you are like I am at home and you water a ton and don't have two meters, you're going to pay. It's going to be a little bit more. It's a conscious decision. But for seniors that might use lower water, it could be significantly less. Right. So. Right. Not e not every user is yeah, equal. Yeah, I can't right. speak to taxes. So you can't just divide it by the number of users no. and think you're going to get no, the that. The formula is number. pretty simple, um, right. and we have gone through it greater depth in years past. And you know, we we've kind of just kind of built on last year's model, right. and then not a lot's changed. But someone did mention earlier. I think it was the gentleman before me. As you make new connections, you're going to change your denominator. So that's right. That's the best way to impact your unit right. costs per household is right. to add customers. As long as you know, uh, right. you could do it in a affordable and, and manner. And I mean, I would consider myself coming from an average home, and we had uh, these. These were right on. Yeah. You know, these I mean, predictions the, were pretty. The close. things to me, and last year was a huge step. I don't discount that at all on the wastewater side. It was a big one, but it was a necessary one. I don't believe, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, that delinquency has significantly changed. That's a usually a good uh, illustration that, you know, while people might not want to eat that sandwich, you know, they understand that it's for the greater good and, mm -hmm. and they've made that adjustment. And this year, the 5%, I don't think you have to look real far to understand that, yeah, you set a budget probably nine months ago for FY22. We all know it's going to change during FY22. It might not be labor. Um, it's going to be sludge. It's going to be fuel. It's the same stuff that we notice when we go to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Right. Uh, Dave, I just wanted to thank you for your response. I, I I'm still, I'm still confused, um, but uh, I just thought I would mention that to the selectmen. You been going to, and hopefully each one of you feels comfortable uh, with, with this calculation. But um, it's a simple thing. If you, if you add our budget. For a sewer enterprise and your principal for sewer and enterprise funds, and you divide that by the number of sewer you are coming up with an eight hundred dollar cost per user, not six hundred. Right. We understand what your we understand your point, Michael, and and I think David adequately addressed it. So, thank you. Did he disappear? Um. Okay. Is is anyone else joining us online who wanted to um, comment at all on this agenda item, the sewer and water rate increases? Doesn't look like anybody else does. Okay, anything else? Thanks, Dave. So do we vote these tonight? Close the hearing. Yeah. If you're prepared to. Yes. Okay. And do we, we have to close the hearing first? Yes, we okay. do. Do I just do that? We don't need a vote to close the hearing? You I can, can just, just close do that, it. close it. So yes. we're going to consider this, this um, proposed water and sewer rate increase hearing closed. And I will entertain a motion. I will make a motion that the proposed rate increase for water and sewer um, be implemented as per our handout. I'll second that. A motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. I wanted to thank Dave yeah. for... Uh, the explanation, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, those in those in the business, those in the field, can can say it in a way that um, you know differently than than we can try to explain it in our roles. So I get it. Uh, You're doing fine, though. Uh, <laughs> so so we we appreciate it, and uh, so thanks to Dave and Phil and Eric and you know Tony and you know, everybody that's part of our water department. And uh, this is all online, right? Yeah, I would encourage people to take website, a look online, and it's on Facebook. And you know, maybe yeah. next time we have something like this, maybe it would be nice to um, share the document as we're talking about it, which is mm. possible. Um, you know, on, on Zoom, that might be helpful for, um, you know, people watching it um, now or later. So that might be something to think about, whether it's this type of thing or other. Mm. We certainly have other things where we could do that. So, all those in favor? yes, all okay. those in favor? Aye. 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 And I, I also want to thank David for all your work on this. Happy to yes, be here. David, you thanks. Easy to work with. You, you do, you make this all, you know, you, you, you put it, Forward in such a you know nice, concise, yep. easy to understand. Now go get that grant. Hang yeah, in. I know. I was just going to say we got to go shoot a buffalo. Hang in there. Thank, thank you, you so much, Phil. Thank you very much, Phil. You let's see. We, we want to just keep Phil's going with deck, Phil's right? DPW items. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next we have a um, 
We have the water and sewer billing commitment. Mm -hmm. um, do, uh, do you want me to read this? Sure. Bill? Okay, so um, the Board of Selectmen commits to you for collection the attached FY 2022 water bills um, in the amount of 352,000 for, excuse me, $352,549.11. And the Board of Selectmen commits to you for collection the attached FY 2022 sewer bills, <clears throat> excuse me, in the amount of 315,000 thousand eight hundred and fifteen dollars and forty four cents and the um, Board of Selectmen commits to you for collection the attached FY 2022 fees in the amount of one thousand dollars total committed for collection six hundred and sixty nine thousand three hundred sixty four dollars and fifty five cents bills will be issued on October 5th and will be due November 5th 2021 need a motion Martin. we need a motion mm-hmm Make a motion to accept as read. Second. A motion made and seconded. All any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Phil and Sharon. Yep. Okay. Next item. The water abatement. The water abatement. <clears throat> Pretty straightforward. So this is a resident of South Street, and this is a pool. Yeah, a new, new pool. pool. New okay, pool these are yeah. these happen frequently. So just so the residents know that when abatement comes in for a new pool liner, the only thing that's abated is the sewer side of it. They pay for the water. To right. Pool. Right. Right. So I'll take a motion on that. I'll make a motion to abate the amount of $124.46 for 10 South Street. Yeah, well, the paperwork looks correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll second that motion. Motion's been made and second. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Fuel tank. And then the fuel tanks, Phil. So... Marlene, who's our procurement officer, has, but we had the bid openings, and uh, the low bid was from Sovereign Builders from Westfield, uh, 148800 and change. Uh, town meeting approved 98000 for the project. <clears throat> so we reached out to the Finance Committee, and they're supposed to take it up last week, which they didn't. Uh, and the only reason that I'm saying that this is an urgent matter is because as of last week, I believe that the insurance company that underwrites the insurance to, to insure the fuel tanks has canceled the policy. Oh, glory. So, so the fuel tanks have no coverage. So they went to a different provider and they again canceled, the, canceled will not well, they accept it. it. They won't accept they the, the policy. So right now we're running with no insurance on the tank. So if the tanks breach for some unknown reason, it's on the town. There's no insurance coverage on those tanks. And we talked, we had a meeting with the contractor last week, brought him in and seeing what the um, time frame to get the tank. As you know, supply is in demand and they can't provide. So it's 16 weeks out. How many? 16. Wow. From the day you place the order. And that puts us smack dab in the middle of winter. So that, till, well, that's when you place the order. So, you know, until then, you're at limbo. And if you, nobody makes a decision of how you're going to fund the remainder, then. And how much was the amount that were? You need 50000 50000 on top of what was appropriated Correct. at town meeting. Yep. And how did that end up being so out of whack? Well, we opened the bids the first time, and they were 148 to 280, and then we rebid it without the canopy in it, and it's the same price. So, people are busy. I mean, people have mo they have work. They don't, you know, they're just throwing numbers at you because there's so much work out there with half the help, <laughs> should I say? I mean, people can't get people to work, you know. And talking to this contractor, even he said, you know, he's going to have to probably try to get someone to work to do this project. It's a small project in his eyes, but it's a huge project for Hatfield. Because don't forget, it's not just the DPW fuel, it's town-wide fuel. 
that supplies fuel to every vehicle in town, ambulance, fire, police, School. schools, everybody. So, it, so you would recommend the Sovereign Builders bid? I would bid? recommend them, yes, from the conversation we had with them and we went over to references and we called I mean, they're a people. reputable company. Very reputable. They do a lot of work. But a it's a matter of, of funding it. As you know, we can't sign the contract until the funding is in place. So, I mean, so what, what is the process? I'm trying to understand the process. If, if the finance committee transfers 50 grand, are we covered or still do we have to go anywhere else? What is that process? I mean, so we, which we, bid is the one that isn't it the total bid at the end of this? That's, that's what the alternate. Oh, it's the one forty-eight. So he wouldn't go with the al the alternate was the, the alternate canopy. Was 50 oh, thousand. oh, okay. Right. Go with okay, that. I'm sorry, I missed that part. <clears throat> My question is, if we appropriated money at town re meeting to go ahead with a certain amount of money, and now that money we appropriated is fifty thousand dollars short. Can the finance committee just transfer the fifty grand and we're covered? That's a decision. We don't have to go back to town meeting. That's a decision. It of the it, yeah, it's a decision committee. of the finance. Have you reached out to the finance committee yet? Absolutely. If they say okay, then we could put this up. They, they, they put some options out there. And is this qualify, is this something? Qualify, we're, so. I mean, are we are we we're scheduled to have a joint meeting with them coming up, we right? Are, probably could, be, uh, November sixteenth. So is this something we could discuss with them when we're together for those purposes? I, I would prefer that we order, we do whatever the next step is in, in the process. And then we'll get the $50,000 from the finance committee or take it out of the DPW budget. And if we have to run in deficit, we have to run in deficit. I mean, it doesn't sound like we have much of a choice. You mean get it on order? Uh, yeah, what yeah, saying. whatever, yeah. I mean, he won't order to tank until the contract is awarded. And it's 16 weeks out to get the tank. And right now we're without insurance because of the way yeah. the condition so, of that. So. No, but so, but let me just let, I, me, I, let I, me just put townspeople at ease though. There's nothing wrong with the tank. The tank is not leaking. It's not breached. It's not it's leaking the, into the ground. It's it's the communication link between the tank and the monitoring system that is really bad. So to replace that is a hundred thousand. To put the new tanks in, it's 148. The tanks have to come out anyways within five years. So you might as well do the whole project at once and put the tanks above the ground, which is proposed. This is so the Vita root system? Yes. It's 100000 to replace that? Yes. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. Holy moly. Yeah. Well, if you don't have that communication link or system that you just alluded to, we is that what monitors... The, that the, monitor, that the what leaks there's or what? There's a sensor in between the two tanks. It's right. a split tank. And there's a sensor in between the two tanks. So if that either tank breaches, that sensor goes off. So right now so you, have, know. you have no way of knowing that. Gotcha. The only way we do it is we stick it every week, them tanks, to make sure that the level is correct. I mean, in addition to that, Vita monitors vehicle usage and, yes. right? So, Okay. I mean, that's a yeah. smaller On the other hand, you have component. a tank inside of a tank, so if that first tank actually so breaks, tank. you're still protected from the ground by the second yeah. containment. You know, when the first one, the Vita Root started shooting all the alarms off, of course, that's what you, you know, you thought the worst case scenario, that something is leaking, but it hasn't, so. You know, and the other, so thing, it, the other thing is with, you know, with DEP and, yeah, and insurance. coming in, you know, to do, to do the inspections, I mean, we just had, an, we had uh, advanced tank come up and do two inspections to make sure, and, you know, now we have to have a third party inspection. Are they going to pass it? Maybe not. You know, maybe not. You know, our, our goal was to leave the tanks operable as long as possible. And then when they contract sign and we have an exact date when they're going to start because they said it's probably a three week project at the most to get the temporary tank set up on the property and then put the new tanks in and then that's it. So I just have a question. I mean, looking at it from a different perspective, if we get shut down by DP and we have to pump out the tank and then we have to get fuel from someplace else, I mean, that's going to cost a lot of money, There's too, really right? no plan B in place if they shut our tanks down. You have two options. You can either credit card it somewhere, yep. or you can put in a temporary tank and pay 
five thousand dollars a month. <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, is this then maybe there should be an emergency meeting of the finance committee or something so that we can get these things ordered. Yeah, just look uh, but I just direction. want to say I understand, you know, and I I feel the urgency here. Okay, I understand that, but. If you're if you say it takes 16 weeks and you project that out four months if we ordered tonight yeah. they're going to come in the dead of winter yeah. are we going to be able to do the project then anyway they said yes they can do it then yeah. okay does the finance committee chair know that about the delivery for the 10, I don't know if 16 he knows about weeks delivery. We, we had a, we, we had a conversation with him when we first got the bid back well you I, know I'm, like i said he had a few options in his mind and he talked to a couple of the committee members but mm -hmm. So I, I would, would be willing to. I, I think that. maybe they, that you should request that they do, a, you know, not necessarily an emergency meeting, but post it with, you know, a, a normal mm. um, posting procedures, but within the maybe the next week or so mm. to, to make a decision on it because because of the lead time on getting those tanks and the issue with them not being insured anymore. Yeah, I mean, we just, you know, I mean, we were hoping that the second party insurance company was going to insure that. And this, pro this project, like any other project, is not going to get any cheaper. Yeah. Well, we can't defer it because we have other you know, insurance yeah. issues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I mean, at some point, we've got to learn that the, all this, these deferrals just cost us more money. Oh. OK, well, that would be my my suggestion, Phil, to I do that. Just, I think you did. I still Isn't think that you just stepping back to Brian's point. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I just think we should move forward. I, I mean, it almost sounds like we don't have an option. And then we'll have to, we'll, we will have to come up with the money, hopefully through working with the finance committee, or we'll have to take it out of a facilities yeah, I mean, budget yeah, or something. Yeah. To, it, it, it's, to me, this is one of those, it's got to get done, right? And, and when you say we don't have the insurance that might be necessary should there be a problem, right? Insurance is one of those things, none of us want it, none of us want to pay for it, mm -hmm. unless we need it. And then we're, we're really happy we have it, right? Our house, our cars, uh, our fuel tanks. So, <coughs> well, excuse know. me, I don't know how you feel. Excuse me, Phil. <coughs> or my colleagues or Marlene about just moving forward. You know, and, well, my suggestion was either, you, you know, to tap the finance reserve <coughs> or, to take it out of the operating budget under the vehicle fuel account and shake it out at the end of the year. Well, that, you know, that's what I mean. Some somewhere. And we, we, you know, we've certainly done that at, at times where unexpected unexpected expenses came up. This one's just really sizable, mm -hmm. you know, compared mm -hmm. to some of the other ones we've said. Okay, spend the money. We'll, mm -hmm. you know, the, I know in the past the finance committee has sort of said, okay, spend the money and we'll deal with the the. Yeah. Um, you know, shortage at the end of the year. That's just a sizable amount of money. Right, and, and don't do get me that. wrong. I have no doubt that we'll be working with the finance committee on this. It's just, to me, it just seems timing is, is somewhat of an issue. And if we have to wait another two or three weeks, well, then there's, we, we just added that, you know, you have to add that Time to the is, tail end if we even good. really get it in 16 weeks. Yeah, that's the best. You know what I mean? That So I, I don't, I would just want to see whatever we need to do to get this thing rolling. Um, in the meantime, we can get with the finance committee if possible and, yeah, and work out, out that other $50,000. But we, we, you know, we need to get rolling, in my opinion. Yeah, because obviously, you know, he's probably going to want, <clears throat> I mean, you have $98,000 approved. I right. Mean, he's probably going to want half of half of his contract, so $75,000, right. say, to order whatever he has to order. Sure, I get that. Know, yeah. And then just so you would have the funds to get it ordered and then we'd yep. sort yeah. the rest of it out. As long as the contract's approved, signed and approved, yeah. you know, the sovereign builder's contract. I mean, I recommend that they get the contract. I saw no problems with it. Well, them. just so people understand, the next closest bid was $60,000 higher. So this is 148, the rest are at 204, 208, 228. So I mean, there, and there, there's and there a are big local, difference. They're a local contractor right. and, a, and a very reputable contractor. Yep. So, you know, you know, I mean, you see, you know, one of those bidders that bid on this project is, you know, he's doing all the big Y expresses. So this was throw a number to you guys, you know. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So I would just suggest that the board move forward, award the contract mm -hmm. to the low bidder. Um, we have the, the 98,000 and if you're comfortable, if it becomes necessary, we, we take it out of the additional out of 
the DPW budget. I would say in the meantime, we're reaching unless they come up with another right. finance solution. Right. In, in the meantime, we reach out to the finance committee, yeah. and maybe they will, uh, you know, approve the transfer, and it won't be necessary for you to take right. it out right. of your budget. But going forward right now, as of tonight, we could plan on that additional money coming out of your operating budget. Yeah. Personally, Just so we can I'd feel contract. better giving the Finance Committee an opportunity. They've got 48 hours to post a meeting and have this discussion and have a decision made about how they're going to fund it than doing it the other way. That's my personal preference. I mean, it's not like it takes them two weeks to meet. You know, given that there's a, an urgent situation, <coughs> I would hope that the Finance Committee would be willing to to hold a, a quick meeting and and take it up. It, you're talking about, a, you know, maybe, I, I, maybe they can't meet by the end of the week. Maybe they could meet Monday or Tuesday mm -hmm. and, and make the decision then. And, and mm -hmm. we have a meeting Tuesday. So if they could do it Monday or, you know, Tuesday, and we could then award the contract. You're talking about a handful of days, but I think it's a better process to go through. I think it's the, I think it's the more responsible way to do it is to go to the finance committee mm -hmm. and give them their opportunity rather than to spend it and then say we got to figure it out. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm hopefully they have had discussions among members already about it. So That would be my preference, but you know, it's it's up, you know, whatever you guys want to do. That's where I'm going to land on it. I uh, I I hear you, and I don't disagree with you, Diana. I just think regardless of what that meeting outcome is, we, we, we need to do this. We that, do need that, to do it. That, that's kind of the only reason I'm going for it. I, I don't disagree a week may or may not make a difference, but I, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm sure these companies are all, the way they schedule, <clears throat> might be first in, might be scope of the job might be can't do anything till the equipment comes in anyways. I mean, the way I'm looking at it is we really have probably 16 weeks to come up with that additional $50,000. But I, I think we need well, to move forward with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. One of, one way or the other, the town has to do this and has to find the money. Right. I just think you're only talking about a delay of four or five business days mm -hmm. to, to go through proper channels and, and you know, allow the finance committee the opportunity to, to you know, have input onto the, the funding of this additional money. Well, what if we give it a time limit? But the finance committee needs to discuss this. With well, we're meeting so next days. Tuesday. Yeah. By next Tuesday, so we can award the contract a week from tonight. Move forward. That's mm -hmm. all. What do we, is that could, a happy compromise? Yes, I think I'm that's an excellent, that. because we could just award it next Tuesday. So yes, it's another week delay. But it is the, the you know the right way to do it to We've allow given them, them to... the opportunity and yeah if they want to act on it great if they don't then we we have to move on it that's all yep that was Bill easy. is that okay that's fine. Brian are you yeah no okay. that, that's that's fine yep. I would say that would be you yeah I mean you've already talked to Daryl so if you could just relay that that was our feeling that we you know our preference is that they discuss this and advise and then we'll make a decision next Tuesday night okay that's fair okay sounds good great Phil thanks for the, the work on that yeah. and keeping us up to date so um, you there's this other matter you're carrying over a vacation. Do we need to vote this, Marlene? Yes, it needs the board's approval. So um, Phil is requesting um, to carry over additional vacation um, until January 1st. Um, due to his workload, it's not possible for him to use it by the end of October. How much time is it, Phil? I really don't know, because I've been taking a few days here and there. So I, I understand really... it's, it's 80 hours. Yeah, I was going to say. It's Two probably, weeks. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of continuing to extend this, and I, I've I been. I, I, but I, and I, but I understand okay. why you're in the predicament, and I appreciate why you're in the predicament. I just, this, I don't want to do this any further than this. I know that. I know it has. Um, so, but I don't want to extend it anymore. Well, that's fine. Hopefully, everything will be shaken out on there. 
Let's hope. Either of you have any okay, I'll make or? a motion to approve the, um, the extension of the carryover time until December 31st. I'll, I'll this says it. January 2021. One. Can we just can we just yeah. so it doesn't till January first, 2022. I'll accept it with the belief that you're going to use the time up, <laughs> and next year we don't have to go through. Yeah, let's. I, I don't want to. I took last Thursday off, and you've seen what happened, and you know it wasn't a day off. <laughs> That'll phone, teach you. We yeah. were all ringing off the hook for right. three hours, four hours, you know. And, and we know that, and we we know that there's this huge project, and there's everything else, but, but just an update on that. So. Uh, Berkshire Gas and Scott Simpson from CEI reached oh. out and we're trying to set up a, a debriefing meeting between the contractor, Berkshire Gas, I don't know. a representative from okay. DigSafe and myself <clears throat> about the ongoing project. Okay. That's supposed to happen this week, okay. so okay. I'm waiting for a, a date. I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I think, I feel like the, the discussion of this as a whole should take p place at a future meeting and yeah. sort of, a, you know, even I, when one of the things Chief Dekoshak had talked to me about over the last few days was sort of a debrief mm -hmm. on all of this with all parties involved, including the residents out there. And I think that's going to be a really important mm -hmm. step to take and a, and a really important meeting to have. So, you know, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of concerns. So, yeah. um, I, I don't know, know that we. That's on the town side. This came from this came from Berkshire Gas. Yeah, so. Right. <clears throat> I don't think we actually took this vote. So, well, I was going to say, you know, as long as there's an approval, if the board oh, is in agreement, you don't have to vote to, it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we're set there. You know, as far as that um, that issue last week, it, I, I and I totally agree with everything you guys are saying. You know, I think the debriefing is going to be important to mm -hmm. know what happened. Mm -hmm. And then if I were a resident out there or a business or any of us, we're going to say, well, how do we prevent that from happening again, right? Absolutely. So, yes. yeah. so it, we can't go back, but we certainly can try to put things in place to avoid something happening and that's going to be in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that, that's the important thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I mean, obviously, you need to be moving forward with those conversations, but for from the perspective of town residents and, <clears throat> and even ones not on that road, I mean, this was concerning, oh, yeah. I think, to everybody. You know, we were all, you know, concerned about what was happening out there. And scary I, stuff. And it, it, it's very scary stuff. Yeah. So it, we were very it's lucky. We were very, lucky. very, very lucky. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Yes, very mm -hmm. lucky. So, um, you know, I think that's just an important mm -hmm. um, component. Um, it, hopefully in the somewhat near future to, to have that meeting so that um, certainly the people out there along the project can have you know, information and chance to, to air their concerns, but you know, people from throughout town. So, okay. Anything else, Phil? Getting ready for, getting ready for that a meeting today with the school department, you know, brought in a new super, interim superintendent, the principals and went over, you know, what the protocol was and what the issues have been in the past. And, you know, I reached out to the athletic director and asked her for a, you know, a schedule for the winter sports because, you know, that takes, if you're having a home game, it takes a little more work over there. Right. You know, so. Right. You know, it's nice to have everything up front and be ready and prepared. Right. And, you know, we told them to get their snowblowers out and check them and see if they need repairs. And yeah. Because we do all the town repairs. So. Yeah, it's going to be here before we know it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> took possession of the new school bus and we are taking possession of one of the new dump trucks hopefully the end of the week so we're good we're Excellent. good <laughs> great well thank your crew for getting yeah. us ready and uh see. we'll thank see you. what it brings <laughs> I, I said, you know, like I said before that you know we brought in a couple hundred tons of salt under the old contract because it's 45 percent cheaper so we right. stuffed it as much as we could in that <clears> barn, you know <throat> We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, be mild. <laughs> yeah, especially with you know the, they're predicting these these uh, increases in heating costs, you know, which you know for a lot of our residents is really going to be too I've bad. I've got solar system working at the school. I haven't heard it. Yeah, we reached out to select a bunch of times. What? No what? answer. They were waiting for for the final permission from EverSource, so 
it's their link between Eversource, them powering it up to Eversource to buy it. So there's something there. That was done at the beginning of the summer, wasn't it? We've been it? reaching out to they. You, to I, I can tell you from from you know my previous job that this is not uncommon. Yeah, that there's a huge struggle once your project is done to actually get it online. Hmm. It's it's not uncommon yeah, at all. Get it in the grid. I mean, it's you know, I mean. You know, their application is in and everything's ready to go. The meters are ready. So the holdup is at Eversource? Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'm going to make a call. Between them and Solar, so. Okay. Okay. That's interesting because um, hmm? actually that just uh, Is he still the Belden Agrid, which the town either. participates in. Um, and Hampshire Power um, works with, with Belden Agrid, and they've run into some issues with Eversource and how the net metering credits are applied on the bill. So yeah, they've been, been struggling trying to get it. I mean, yeah. You know. I mean, usually residential, they, they hook up right away. Commercial, it's, there's, <coughs> a delay. there's a wait. Okay. Well, I'm sure you've had some experience dealing with the same problems up there. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I, I do have someone I can call. I don't know that it'll get us anywhere, but I'm willing to do it. It's always had someone nice to talk to. Always. Exactly. <laughs> and this is a very helpful, wonderful person, so we'll see what, see what I can do. I'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Phil, is that, yeah, that it for it. your report? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Finally, Marlene, <clears throat> we moved Excuse everybody me. around Thank and you. saved you for last. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just want to mention um, at the beginning of the meeting during announcements should have just reminded as a reminder real estate and water and sewer bills are due next week um, quick financial update uh, the accountant is uh, continuing to close out FY 21 she expects to finish up uh, either the end of this week or next week and submit reports to the Division of Local Services we have the FY21 audit scheduled with Tony Roselli the week of November 15th. And the tax classification hearing will be held on Tuesday, November 16th. So moving along um, with closing out FY21. Well, that's and we should have a free cash uh, estimate as well next week. Great. Yeah. That's great. Well, and, and you know, thank you to... Uh, you know Sharon and her staff mm -hmm. and the assessor the Jennifer and um, the assessors and, and Melanson and all of yeah. the people who are um, part of that process mm. yeah um, MassWorks grant update the quarterly report was ending September 30th uh, was due and that has been submitted uh, along with a reimbursement request for $375,541.11. And I, you should have in your packet um, just an expenditure report for the MassWorks grant. Mm -hmm. um, th and that includes uh, all, all expenditures applied to the grant. Um, so the current balance right now is we have $921,000.19. About half. Yeah. Just for, so, if I may, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say, just so residents mm -hmm. understand, this is the grant that's paying for the five majority project, of the Route the 5 The water project. and sewer, yes, yeah. and I'm sorry, I, I refer to the MassWorks grant project and just assume everybody no, knows what we're talking yeah, about. But, you know, so, but, but yes, yeah. this is for the uh, Route 5 water and <clears throat> sewer uh, infrastructure improvements project. And so we're using, spending down the grant um, in advance of the one6 million dollars that was authorized for you know to borrow right. so this is a 3.6 million dollar project two million is funded from the state mm -hmm. um, can we just backtrack i'm sorry so is uh, that project going to come to an end for the season soon i would say yes and the road is yeah, going I mean, to Mass be dot has been you know their inspector's been there so he's been watching them very closely so i'm sure that they have a de DOT has a deadline. They have a right. deadline, and then the road improvement has to be done by then. So, like a skim what he coat? was trying to do is, I'll tell you exactly what he was trying to do. He's trying to get as much pipe in as he could, and 
do a pay from the culvert by GNS north as far as you could go where you put the pipe in and then redo the trenches up that north end and the same thing on the south side of the culvert to do that part. So DLT is going to be a stickler with them, I guess. To, <coughs> that's what I'm hearing from Jay, from the engineer down there. That you know, he's going to want the road improved for the winter. So I would hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I mean, I drive that road a lot. It's rough. Yeah, it is very bumpy. So there'd be like a skim coat or something. I would say. Okay. You know. I'm sure a lot of people are happy with that. <laughs> um, I have heard from residents that they're, you know, not happy with the condition of that. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, that's no, that's okay. That is perfectly fine. Um, also, uh, hazard mitigation grant update. The quarterly report ending uh, September 30th was submitted to MEMA. 90% of the project is completed. Um, the draft plan is available on the town's website and Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's website. And our next meeting, um, actually it's November 2nd, right, next week we have our second public presentation on the hazard mitigation. Um, and it, it's, you know, open to the public, you know, for, for comments and um, any feedback. So then if, you know, we'll, we'll take those comments under advisement and then go back and, and look at the draft. And then the next step in the process would be to present it to the select board for approval. And then it's submitted to MEMA for okay. review and approval quite a process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, conservation commission membership um, initially this a town meeting voted to um, set the the members of the commission at seven it actually was in 1973 and a question has come up about I had a conversation with the town clerk someone from town had expressed interest in serving on the Conservation Commission, we had believed that there were um, two vacancies. Um, and then we discovered there isn't any vacancies. Apparently, a, a vote to, <coughs> to reduce the Conservation Commission, which was requested by a member of the Conservation Commission in 2014, um, the vote, the board acted, the select board acted on, on that and reduced it to five. However, looking at, you know, previous authorizations to set the membership of any board or committee, it needs to be done by town meeting article. So the town clerk um, had, had asked if, you know, I would have a discussion with the select board. And if the board so chooses, we could put an article on the annual town meeting warrant in the spring to reduce the Conservation Commission. So... They currently have... They currently have five members and have difficulty getting a quorum. I was, well, I was just going to say, right. isn't that... I was, <laughs> and I was just going to say, probably why it was brought before the I Board believe, of Selectmen in 2014 to well, say... Well, even did you read the just, minutes from you know, 2014? Because that seems so such a strange... Did you read this? Yes, I did. It says that Ron Sassy petitioned the Board of Selectmen to reduce the Conservation Commission to five members to memorialize Corey Bardwell and Flash Williams. Yeah. Certainly worth remo memorializing both of those gentlemen, but... I don't understand the connection between reducing the size. Right. So I don't understand. Yeah. And there doesn't, there's not much more in the minutes except that they approved it. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. how so that memorialized when, them. But So if you read that, I, re, I reviewed the statute, and the statute says that a, a town that accepts that statute may create a conservation commission, and you can have between five and seven or up to seven members. Well, when the town voted to accept it, the article stated to appoint a seven-member commission. I believe if you hadn't, if the town hadn't actually voted that number just to appoint the, the, the conservation board, board would have had the select board would have to change it. Correct. But correct. now we need to change it by town meeting. We vote. do. So my okay, and and we do know they have quorum problems. So yes, keeping it at seven just creates additional it, problems. It does. 
But I'm also curious, and it's a separate issue, if this all came to light because we had someone asking to be on the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. does it make sense to see who who's not coming to the meetings and get this person who's interested in being on on the commission? I think that would be a good idea to, yeah, still, you I know, mean, we can certainly appoint that individual because the commission can have seven members. Right, so the, the 2014 vote means nothing. Right. So, okay. Well, I mean, I, I would be in favor of officially changing it down to the five members and also appointing this person. Mm. Well, but if we appoint them, then there's six members. So then when we go to town meeting, we've got six members on a five. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I think the so real issue is to... reaching out to the, the folks who are not right. attending. There are a couple of people they're... I'd like to talk to on the Conservation Commission. I know it's a challenge for them to make those meetings. So maybe they'd be, one of them would be willing to step aside, particularly knowing that there's a, a, you know, a citizen who's interested mm -hmm. in being on the committee who yeah. could maybe solve those quorum, yeah. pro quorum problems. So we sort of have two separate issues. But, so, so we can take this back up at a later date. And I, you know, this was, it, this was well put together by Lydia because it mm -hmm. made everything make sense. So mm -hmm. thank you to Lydia for doing that. Um, okay, so, okay, so there's no action needed, just that we'll put that in the file for annual town meeting. Yes. Did you have any comments on that or anything? No, I, we got to find out from them if they're going to have six or seven or are they happy with five, so. Right. Whatever the quorum is, I think they'd be happy to have that quorum at their meetings. Right. Because there have been a few times where they weren't able to hold a meeting that was scheduled and people were lined up to meet with them. And, and, and we were contacted. Right. We were contacted by, you know, residents <laughs> that were being held up by them not holding their meetings. That's right. That's a problem. That's not, that's not a good look mm. for us. So. So, well, and that's, and that's with the assumption that it's only supposed to be five members, correct? By law, it says uh, the I, statute. I'm saying the problems we're having right, oh, right now, now are based yeah. on a five-member board. That is correct. So Because that's what, yeah, they believe. But if we had a seven-member board, I, right, it'd be yeah. the same, theoretically, I, depending on who the two members are, I guess. I, you know. mm. if, if, I, I, I would suggest if somebody right. came forward, we can just change our vote that didn't really count anyways in 2014. And just appoint a sixth person. Well, we right? could. Or seventh person. But, right, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We could appoint a sixth person. But then you're. But going then to if we're going to town meeting to reduce it to five, now we have a six yeah. member. Yeah. Or, or we can. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's like any committee, right? It's all about how many people are serving on it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you try to have as much input as as usual. I think five was probably the number because that's what the majority of our committees in town seem to have five members. You know, mm. regardless of what Ron said uh, back in 2014 about um, Corey and um, and Flash, I, I I think it was also at that might have been part of it, and probably what didn't get I, picked up in the minutes was probably, and they are having problem getting right. form for seven members. Well, I, now I, they're I, having so, problem getting form well, for five. Exactly. Mm. So okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, maybe a conversation with the conservation committee members, mm -hmm. commission yeah. members, and Doesn't then say I'll, I'll follow um, up with you them. know moving forward with something for annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you, Lydia. Yep. And just one last item: use of space in town hall. We had talked about this at a previous meeting. I know Ed has has had some conversations with. Uh, various departments, and um, I had reached out to departments, and some departments have responded. Um, for the most part, um, most people are comfortable with where they are. Mm -hmm. However, they feel that they could have more space if they were able to store files and, and you know, documents sure. somewhere else. Um, in the meantime, and it's always a challenge, to you know, make time to to go through old records and and right. you know what, decipher what can what be do you really need, of. what don't you? Right, right. I, but, are, are some of those kept, or many of those, or a certain number kept in the basement of this building? There, there are files stored downstairs in the back of town hall. Mm. There's a closet at the bottom of the stairs, and like official records that we need to keep and stay safe. Yes. Right? So, so those would probably certainly be better off moved moved 
up higher ground, the absolutely. higher ground. Given it's uh, the town clerk and, and treasurer's office that have yeah, it, so, uh, files you know. stored down there. And I assume all departments stay on top of like the Secretary of State guidelines for when you destroy and yeah. and we're keeping. They have a retention schedule. Yeah, they, they it, are we that. keeping on that retention schedule and actually destroying the ones that yeah, are the challenge? <laughs> that's what I was assuming yeah. is the yeah. challenge. That's why I'm asking right. the question. We're doing yes. Yeah. We are actually, you know, we've all been making an effort to, to go through files and. We did talk about the fact that, since the department heads are the only one that can determine whether or not the file goes or keeping mm. it, the idea of maybe if they had somebody on the tax write-up come in and mm -hmm. just sort them, yeah. put them in order so that it'd make it easier for them to go through the files and, mm -hmm. and that way that might help yeah I talked about that last week at the department head meeting that you know certainly if there's somebody interested in in um, utilizing that program that to keep that an individual in mind to do that type of, of work mm. um, yeah I mean if things are labeled with a destroy date then you just have to do the project once and yeah yeah, yeah. but going for it and Diana you and I had talked about this a few weeks ago is as an example, the um, files for the last renovations um, here right. at Town Hall. So, you know, you label when it can be disposed of and makes the process that much easier. Right, right. Yeah. But thousands of files haven't been done that way, so. That's correct, yeah. They yeah, just, it's a big job to backtrack it. Yeah. What happens is they go into a filing cabinet, then you need more room, you're taking those files out of the filing cabinet, putting them in a box, you label it. But yes, it, it would work much more efficient if you labeled when, yeah. when you can dispose those records. It'll certainly be a lot of work, especially this, probably, mm -hmm. this first time, it, mm -hmm. until there's mm -hmm. a routine a and, and, a, and a system for the future. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm more concerned about anything that's downstairs that mm. um, is subject to um, any, any sort of what, you know, water or weather or broken pipes because everything goes down right so um, I would say that at a minimum we should get it on this floor but well that's what I mean yeah just, downstairs is you know yeah, you have um, that much well and then there's certain obviously yeah. documents we never destroy yeah. Yeah. on top of files and we were talking about what to do with the cable TV that's in the closet over here mm -hmm. that's another thing. <laughs> wait 20 years <laughs> don't be so impatient John <laughs> <laughs> you know, talking about we love to get files, you a great space. My office got dumped with town council. I know Bill O'Neill. You know, oh. retired. Right. All his and he had been town council for Hatfield for oh my god. There's got to be some records. So his in there boxes are... were. They came back here before I even came back. Yep. <laughs> They've right. been sitting in there, and then. Unfortunately, Gary Brack, Gary, his town yeah. council, passed away, so he had a few boxes that that came here, and so they've piled up. And then, you know, we've had some select board members who decided to bring all their documents that they had at home here. I still have boxes of documents from when I was on the board before in my attic. So you're telling me you're going to be bringing your boxes? No, too? I, I have this idea that someday my kids will want to look through them and one, and find out what I did. <laughs> Probably not, but <laughs> you never know. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so that's all I have to report. I, I do have one item of unanticipated new business, so whenever you're ready to. I'm ready. Are you ready? Um, sure. I was contacted by the, the school committee chair, um, Rebecca Bench, and the school committee is preparing to uh, sit down and negotiate the Hatfield Teachers uh, that time of year huh? agreement con union contract and um, they are interested in in hearing from the select board who the town representative will be on the negotiations committee so I thought I would put that out there to the board you'd like to oh well I did the um, para professional negotiations okay. last year so I'd certainly be willing to turn it over to one of my <coughs> colleagues and Brian with all your experience on the school Board. I, I uh, think Brian would be a great candidate. I think Brian would be a fantastic. Oh, damn it! <laughs> I was just going to say, unless Ed wants to do it. Um, well, thanks. Yeah, I've that, done it before, and it's yeah. actually it's interesting process. And and I, you know, the the para process was, it was is. interesting. 
So this will be my sixth teacher's contract that I'll be part of. See? The first so time as so a select board member versus a school committee member. So get to see it from a little bit different perspective. You're willing so I'd to be, do it? I, I'm willing to do it. Okay. Thank okay. you. Too. Do we need to thank appoint right. him or is it an think, official appointment? I think or? it's and a, Diana, it, thank it's you. just a designee. <laughs> it's a designation. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Payback. It's a lot of meetings. I mean, they, it's a big, it's a it big is. job. So it even is. on the para side, there was, you know, we had a lot of meetings. There's a lot of meetings. It's important. And um, yeah, it, it, it's mm -hmm. a good, it's a good process. It is a good process. So is this like pretty much a winter project I, I, for the school? It, I can only speak to the, in the past, it sort of starts a little slowly right. and then it kind of picks up steam yeah. because you try to have everything wrapped up before town before meeting. The I was just going to say, know, before it, the budget ahead of the together. budget. But right. I just remembered we have gone into budgets and they're still yeah, working true. it out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it, I'm guessing it probably expired. The current contract, if they're starting it now, probably expires on June 30th of 2022. So mm. it's, it's about getting things lined up to start on July. So there's not much time. There's not yeah. much time, really. It's true. So there's a yeah. lot to go over in those contracts and yeah. a lot of back and mm. forth. And vacations. Mm -hmm. you know, take that time. Yep. Okay. Okay. This other item that's in the signature, we, we, don't have, we already voted on this. We just signed. Correct? The con employee contract. Um, you, had, you had voted to yeah. extend it. Yeah. Yeah. So this it so just needs you a can, signature. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. I don't have anything else. Marlene, Ed, Brian. I am all set. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? No. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you, John. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Phil.